So today I thought I'd do a little fun video where you guys kind of come with me and get ready for mass with me and then kind of go to mass with me. Um, mine is actually seeing the mass part because I'm not going to film it because it's on their YouTube channel if you want to go check out St. John of Cantius. They are on YouTube and they do masses like twice, so like at 7.30 and 8.30 on weekdays and then, except for Wednesdays, they have an extra mass at night. And then on weekends they do more masses. So anyway, feel free to go check that out. Um, but yeah, you're going to get ready with me, see how I get ready, pick out my outfit and see what I do to like prepare for mass beforehand. Our first thing, um, which is actually an examination of conscience. I always, always try to push people. <sighs> Sorry, I had a little asthma attack there. <laughs> I always try to push people. If you go to mass on Sunday, push yourself to go to confession every week. I know it's difficult. My voice is cracking because I just woke up. I know it's difficult, but doing an examine of doing an examination of conscience every day is super beneficial for our relationship with God. Plus, it helps us to become more saint-like because we're understanding our faults, how we're falling into those things, mainly sins, and uh, how to avoid them, which is so so important as a Christian Catholic. So. With that being said, we're going to start off with that first thing, which is the examination of conscience. Um, you can basically find it online. I prefer to use the examination of conscience in the back of a book called uh, Swords and Shadows. However, I lent it to my boyfriend. He's reading it right now. So I don't have the book. I probably should have just taken a picture of it. I'll do that next time I go over. So I go online and I actually just find certain ones. And normally an examination of conscience goes through all the Ten Commandments. So it's really important to kind of go through all of those and really examine yourself and better yourself because the end goal is heaven, y'all. End goal. Alright you guys, now it is 8.58, so I am going to get my shower stuff ready. I don't usually go through my phone at this time, um, I usually just try to go through and respond to my boyfriend. But, I don't... There we go, okay. Now, obviously hygiene is super important. Um, so I'm gonna brush my teeth. Please, be brushing your teeth twice a day and flossing. So important. Um, and I'm gonna brush my hair out so that it doesn't get tangled. And, oh, I'm also gonna do my white, um, my teeth whitening uh, thing, so. Do you guys floss before or after you brush your teeth? I usually do it before, but let me know what you guys do. Okay everyone, so this is my mask fit. You can't really see it again, because once again, I am short. Um, I was gonna say I could do it in the bathroom, but that's too much work, so we're gonna do it on my bed. Let's see if you can even see it. Now, Maybe, sort of, kind of, I don't know. So, um, I don't know if any other girls struggle with this. Um, sorry, trying to get the clumps out of my hair. But I've always struggled with looking feminine. I never felt like dresses like this looked good on me. Um, and I kind of still don't, but at the same time, I really do want to practice like that feminine side. So I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. And I do think this is a really pretty dress. I do. I just think it might be a little big for me. Um, and by big, I mean like too much fabric. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, however, it's very cute. And when I do my makeup and everything, the look will be complete. So... I'm going to go do that. I'm not really going to bring you guys with me for that because it's really long and really dumb and all it really is is concealer and mascara. So, I will be right back. Okay, so basically that's the completed look. I know you can't really see them both together. I don't exactly have a mirror in my room, one of those long mirrors, so maybe I should get one of those. Might be a good investment. Um, so that's all done. And I always take my lip glosses with just in case. And, um... And so now, usually with a dress like this, I wear my white wedges, which are like pretty high. So when I go to kneel, I really need to hold on to something, and sometimes I forget, and sometimes I just go wee. So, yeah.
So I always take my water bottle with me because our church doesn't really have air conditioning. Um, and I can get dehydrated really fast and that results in me fainting. So pro tip, take a water bottle with you. Um, and then of course I have my uh, examination of conscience. Um, if you guys do write down your sins um, on paper so you remember them when you go to confession, I do this all the time because I kind of I kind of get stage fright <laughs> when I go into the confessional and I just kneel down and I'm just like, uh. So if you do write them down like me, make sure you burn them. Don't just throw them away. Don't just rip them up. Actually physically see them turn to ash. Um, it's really important and just, yeah, just make sure you burn them. I don't eat before mass. My uh, mass time is at 11, so I don't eat before then. Um, and I usually stop eating at 8 the night before, so it's usually around a 16-ish hour fast I do. Um, and I do it for health benefits as well as religious benefits. So it's kind of like a win-win. Originally, I was fasting for uh, religious reasons. And then I realized that it actually helps with my um, physical health as well. So it just kind of seemed like a no-brainer. Kill two birds with one stone, right? Sorry, I'm trying to go where like the lighting isn't terrible. But that's everywhere. So, um, yeah. So it's usually about... St. John of Cantus is usually about like... Gosh, I don't know. Last time I went it was 20 minutes, but sometimes I go and it's like 45. So I really have no idea how long it's going to take. I guess I could look it up. I don't know where my phone is. It's fine. <laughs> Either way though, I usually like to leave around 10 because I like to get there a half hour early and really just kind of um, just read my Bible, journal, go to confession. Um, and I know for a fact that confession lines can be extremely long. So if, you know, there is confession, I usually try to go to that. Um, and I think I've stand in line for confession for 30, an hour, 30 minutes to an hour. So it's worth it though, you know? If uh, somebody's telling you to get out of line, you know, like a little voice in your head, that's the devil. So just stay in line, kids, stay in line. And so yeah, let's go to church. Okay, so I am going to turn the car on because uh, that might be necessary to actually go somewhere. Um, it's beautiful. Too cold. Okay, so I am going to put on um, Trending with Timory. I am currently listening to uh, Leisure, Rest, and Women in the Workplace. So I am listening to that and we are going downtown. So I will see you downtown. Hey my dudes, so I just got out of mass and um, I kind of wanted to talk about something that kind of bugged me a little bit and it kind of has to do with the virtue of modesty as well, um, but one of my biggest pet peeves is I came, I started coming to the Trinidine Mass, the, the traditional Latin Mass, because I liked the reverence, I liked that people dressed modestly, I liked the fact that um, it was a part of before, like pre-Vatican II. You know, so, anyway, um, but on like four different accounts, I saw about five different guys pull out their phones and start like taking pictures and videos of the mass and the consecration of the hosts and like the, the, um, the choir and all of that. And y'all put your phones away. Mass is no place for phones, and if you can't trust yourself to not take your phone out, leave it in the car. The Mass is about God, about Jesus. It's about, you know, paying Him homage, and, um, you know, it's only an hour. You guys can put your phones away. And if you do want to take pictures and stuff, you can, um, that was Brother Juan. You guys, Brother Juan is literally the sweetest. He just got me. Our Lady of Fatima statue from Wisconsin, like, how sweet is this man? He is amazing. Such an amazing holy man. Honestly, though, all the priests here are so sweet and so nice, and all the brothers as well. And Brother Juan is just such a sweet soul. Honestly, such a holy soul. 
So back to my little rant. I saw four or five people today pull out their phones and start recording the mass. The mass is recorded already on YouTube and also it just takes away from the reverence, you know? Like, you're supposed to be paying attention, participating, and how are you going to do that if you are distracted by your phone? Um, and you know, and stuff like that. And it's just, it's not classy, it's not something I like to see, and it's not something that you should be doing, so don't do it. Um, and if you do want to take pictures and all of that stuff, wait till after Mass or before Mass. A lot of times they're playing music before Mass. They are performing and practicing the songs beforehand for Mass. So if you do want to record the music and stuff, do it before Mass. Anyway, that's just my little rant. Phones have no place in Mass, during Mass. Um, so if you can't trust yourself to not go on your phone, leave it in the car. Hi, um, may I please have two large iced coffees, black? Okay. And then can I have a, um, a medium dark roast iced coffee with almond milk and uh, two squirts of the French vanilla? Okay. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. How did I know I mean, because I always order the two large black coffees. <laughs> it's either me or my dad. <laughs> Alright, 888? All right, you guys can keep the change. Yeah. Yes. You guys work hard. I know what it's like to be in retail and food business. It sucks. Perfect. Thank you so much. You too. So I just wanted to say something though real fast. If you guys are ever, I'm turning off the radio. If you guys are ever in like a drive-thru or um, anything like that, like a McDonald's drive-thru or a Dunkin' Donuts drive-thru, better not be a Starbucks drive-thru because we can't support that because they support Planned Parenthood and we ain't about to do that. You don't have to do it every single time and sometimes there's not going to be an opportunity to do it, but when you are able to, pay for the person that's behind you. Um, I've done this basically a lot around Christmas time um, because we never know what people are struggling with internally and so it's always a good rule of thumb to just treat everyone with respect and genuine kindness and um, everyone deserves you know to be treated with respect no matter their race their gender their their beliefs um, so just keep that in mind and when possible give to those who are strangers give to those who are family and friends um, but I know a lot of times it can be difficult to find um, things to give people so sometimes just you know giving them a free drink a free meal you know in a drive through can mean the world to somebody um, and yeah I just I don't know I just wanted to put that out there maybe nobody thought of it um, I know not a lot of my friends have thought about it before and then I mentioned it to them I'm like oh yeah you know uh, to give back sometimes I will pay for the person behind me in line at a drive-thru and they're like I never even thought of doing that so if you guys want to um, shove a little bit of kindness into your day pay for the person behind you at the drive-thru uh, you can even do it at a restaurant uh, you can pay for somebody's bill at a restaurant it's a little more tricky to do it anonymously that way um, I prefer to do it anonymously because I don't I you I don't take I don't feel like taking credit for anything like it's it's just something we should do out of the kindness of our hearts it's not something we should be rewarded for um, but yeah it's just it's really um, it's a really nice thing to do for those who might be going through a difficult time um, who might not you know or they're perfectly fine like sometimes people are just totally 100% perfectly fine but it's just a really nice gesture so I just put that out there you're welcome so basically I just got home I just let the dogs out I'm gonna go check on the cats um, my parents went on some errands I think they're getting some more plants from a nursery or something like that so um, yeah also I should mention we ended up adopting Peter and Molly they are now ours. Uh, Peter is a Russian blue, we believe, and Molly, we, we think that she's a silver tabby. We also might think that she's marbled. We don't really know. And Socks is some kind of 
weirdo. We have no idea. But we didn't adopt socks. Um, we're thinking about it, but we're not sure yet. Um, so yeah, I will go check on them real fast. Molly, hi. Hi, baby girl. <gasps> There's my buddy. Hey, Peter. How you doing, pal? Oh, you got a little boogie. You got a little boogie. Yeah, they're kind of getting over a little cold that they got when they were um, in the uh, shelter. So, boop. And then here's Socks. Hi, buddy. He's, he's, we don't know what he is. He's very much so insane. So, he's one of them. So, if you guys have any ideas on what Socks might be, comment below. Because we, we really don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you still getting over your cold? Yeah. Yeah. This is Molly. Obviously, you guys remember her from the last video. Um, but she's my mom's cat. And then we got Peter. Where'd he go? Which you guys already saw. Oh, yes. There he is. There's my buddy. So, yeah. Hi, baby. And then socks we're still debating on. But we're trying to introduce them to the dogs and the rest of the house. Oh, pfft. So, um, that's been a little bit of a process, but it's going to take a while, and that's okay. Right? It's just going to take a little bit. So we're going to give them a treat, and then I'm going to go upstairs and change. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to go change and start, you know, getting a head start on some of the chores. Um, but thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. God bless!